Move forward. Okay, so this will be up sometime tomorrow. Okay, the recording. Uh, so, welcome back after the summer. The hard work starts for me now. I've got a. I wrote my book during the summer, and I've got to get it all sorted with the publisher and all the edits and everything by the end of October, so it can launch in December. So a lot of work for me to do there, a lot of work for me to do with the um, auto traders, with the enterprise membership, because the summer just about resets uh, behavior uh, and we have to learn again and, and get it right. I'm going to go through that in a little while. I'm going to actually start afresh and optimize uh, an instrument and go through that process. Um, first of all, I'm going to go through the Stocks Predator and the the new edition that's come out, which is the Expert Algo Scanner for stocks. So um, hopefully you can see my screen here. Uh, we've got uh, the chart with the Expert Algo on, on the right-hand side, and this is the Expert Algo Scanner. Okay. Uh, just let me know you can see that okay in the chat, and then we'll get going. Okay. So... The whole point of Exprat uh, Stocks Predator is to identify confluences between technical fundamental data. So the next part of the development and the beta testers are already using this um, is we've got the Exprat Algo scanner now, which is fantastic. And I'll go through that in a minute. But then we're going to start to build what's called a confluence meter. So if we get... Uh, the scan for unusual activity, insider activity and expert algo. If there's a stock that appears on two or more of those, uh, it will appear in our confluence scanner. Okay, which is really, really cool, confluence meter. Plus we're also going to be adding that to the main watch list. So if you've got Tesla on your watch list, for example, here, uh, that same confluence will appear on there. So if Tesla appears on, um, and no unusual opt options activity and the expert algo scanner, for example, uh, that will light up with some with some traffic lights on there as well on the watch list. So two sides that. The main thing is over the summer we were able to get this working. <laughs> it's very very cool. Um, one thing you, you obviously filter by uh, ranking, so four or five or a six star cell, for example. And um, it will, obviously, when you click on it, it will go on to the chart. Some of these are a little bit, uh, some of these are ETFs, so they're a little bit gappy here. But I thought it important that we include stocks as well as ETFs. So very, very important for me, uh, because there's some good ETFs out there that are very tradable. Um, so, you know, it's pointless leaving them out of the scan when we can scan for them. Um, so as, as you can see here, when I'm clicking on the scans, uh, got six star buy, there's a six star buy there. Um, and then so on and so forth. We can um, just click on the chart. And the idea is that <clears throat> this is a very accurate scan uh, and it's done a lot of, we've done a lot of testing with it. So now when we have on the filters section here at the moment, uh, we have the two um, sales by industry and buyers by industry for the insider trading. What the developer is working on right now is um, to add a third pane to this with the, um, the confluence meter. Um, so the first technical scanner is the expert algo. There'll be more added to this, the VWAP Predator, uh, harmonics, um, roller coaster. Elliott wave, that sort of thing. And the idea is with this meter is when those scans are run, when you first switched it on, and all of a sudden you've got uh, a fourth wave that's, um, for example, that's um, formed in the last sort of, I don't know, five days or so. And then you've got a six star buy signal uh, on the expert algo scanner. All of a sudden there's two uh, technical scanners. And, and then if there's uh, an unusual options activity, that will come up with like a traffic light. And if they're all buys, it'll be green. Uh, and that confluence will lead you to that stock that's a very, very strong buy because we're not looking at uh, just technical scans here. Uh, we're looking at technical scans of different types of strategies for different market conditions, but also for fundamental uh, analysis, options data, that sort of thing. So very, very powerful tool, standalone tool. Uh, and when we look at unusual options activity right now, 
Uh, we have a victory rate on there as well. So this one uh, here, for example, CBay stock price 1378, strike price on the options $25 calls. Um, volume's not too bad there. Expiration 20th of the 10th. So if we click on that, for example, the charts will load up. Uh, and, um, you know, that's a start point. We can then look at the daily, the weekly, the four hour charts, um, you know, and we look for those other signals. Now, they may not appear straight away, but what will happen is if this uh, particular stock, CBay, uh, has appeared on that unusual options activity for the last 30 days, in the last 30 days, and we do then get a an expert algo signal or roller coaster or whatever it is, um, all of a sudden now that starts ringing alarm bells and we start to really take notice and that comes on that confluence meter. Um, but again, they're tradable on their own. Um, but the idea with this is to try and build up confidence in a particular buy or sell of the stock so we can get that confluence meter running. For example, this one here, look, uh, we did have on the four hour time frame around about... We had the signal in the end of July, really started going <coughs> earnings here. You, there would have been um, the TDS. If we look back in history, there would have been some unusual options activity leading up to earnings there. And we would have put that order on. Even if after earnings, we've got a six star buy on the weekly signal here. So this, for example, uh, TDS would have come up on the uh, confluence meter it would have come up on the confluence meter with the roller coaster, unusual options activity, and on the weekly, the expert algo six star buy. So you, when you've got that confluence of different signals from totally different data, uh, that's a strong buy. And I mean, this is this is just a prime example of, of what happens um, leading into earnings when we get those, um, those op that's op options activity, We've got that roller coaster signal before earnings as well. Um, you know, the, this the market thinks it's going to go, yeah, and that's um, you know, in most of the cases, a very very strong signal. And we've got a thirty dollars strike price in the middle of November. So thirty dollars is quite a long way. If we go down to the up to the weekly chart here, and we just zoom in a little bit. When it oh, I've loaded up the wrong thing here. Sorry. We go to the weekly and we just zoom out a little bit. So we've had some highs of 26.71. Uh, we've been way above 30 in the past. So $30 is probably a sensible type of strike price, really, and target. Uh, there is some resistance coming up. Um, but right now, so it could pull back a little bit. And that's when we'd look for those Elliott Wave pullbacks and start to to get into that trade. Um, <clears throat> so very, very, um, very excited about this. This is a standalone platform. Yes, we're using TradingView charting on there purely because we've built the indicators for that. So it's pointless having a scanner and not being able to show the, 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 the um, you know, the thing of the, the, the signal of the chart, uh, you know, conversely, even if we go down to the, the, the six star cells, for example, they appear on the chart. So the scanner, even though it's done on our server, uses the same rules, the, the confluence of the same 12 points of control and grades those trades as it were, six star cell right there. So two different points are there, but everything marries up and works very, very well there. So big sell on NEO here as well, for example. So again, it's it's a lot of work and we do still have uh, some beta test slots, but this will launch with my book at, in December. So when it launches, there's no beta test, there's no lifetime license. The base model, uh, what you're seeing now, plus the, um, the confluence meter, if you like, uh, and the compliments on the main watch list and the chat, once that's all done, uh, that base model will be $250 a month. Um, right now it's $2,000 for life to become a beta tester. Uh, and then as we add other scans like VWAP Predator on the 30 minute, that's the, that's the plan there. So we can get some intraday signals with live data. So every 30 minutes the scan will run and it will give us a... Uh, 
a set of results uh, throughout the whole stock market, maybe the S&P 500 to begin with, um, on the 30-minute time frame with that VWAP Predator. Roller coasters going to be there, harmonics. Every time we add one, uh, if you're not a lifetime licensed beta tester, it's an extra $50 a month if you want it. But again, the, imagine the confluence over five different technical strategies plus the um, unusual activities plus uh, options uh, inside, you know, the unusual options. It's a very, very powerful tool. So I think um, what I'm going to do right now is just leave that one there, but I just want to get... Um, Bear with me, I'm gonna get the link. Because again, there are still places left in the beta testing to get it for life. So all the updates that we do, all the extra scans and everything like that, you will get it for life. Uh, and that's, for me, is very, very good. For $2,000, when it's gonna be $250 a month base, that is an amazing opportunity, really. So I'm going to put that in the chat so everybody can see that there. Um, please don't delay because when it's full, it's full. Okay. Even if it's full before December when we launch it. So uh, please don't delay. So that's the stocks predator. Quick overview of what's new with the X-ray Algo scanner. Plus also then uh, the plans that are in motion right now to build that confluence. Any questions on that before we move on? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Ron in the chat, just let me know what you want to hold when you uh, what you want to uh, ask. So in the in the chat box, um, put your question in there. Hopefully you can find the chat box. I've never been on the other side of this webinar. It should be pretty easy to find. No, it's 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 the stocks predator, Ron. Uh, so um, you know, it's it's purely for U.S. stocks and ETFs. Uh, it's not for futures at all. Uh, there there will be plans next year to build something else, more of an app. I know, but you've got to think it's easier for us to acquire. And, man and manipulate and 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 sift through stocks data. Futures day data is extremely expensive. Um, there's only one source, and it's all about licensing, which is very very difficult. Uh, we bought a a license for when we can get it for 500 users for stocks at a time. Uh, and, you know, we've got the date, the server cost and all that sort of stuff. That's why we go into subscription model when we do launch it properly. Um, the only way we're going to be able to do something similar for futures is to run it more in an app just to give alerts. Uh, and that would be a development for next year. I've got it in my mind. Uh, I've got a meeting with a developer towards the end of the year to figure out how we would do it. Um, but that's, um, you know, <laughs> yes, uh, that will be on the phone, on an app. Um, Wilbur, please, yeah, put your question in. So, um, no, it won't be, it'll be standalone. Uh, when we do do alerts for futures, it will be standalone. Uh, this stock's predator is standalone, um, you know, uh, with the the confluence type meter, we need to get e external data in, go through that data and push information out. So we can do that in in our own app, or in this case, in our own dashboard. Okay, Wilbert, if you use the chat to ask the question. If you can find the chat, what I'm going to do now is bring over the automated strategy builder because I promised the enterprise membership that I would go through um, 
the process for optimizing again, just to remind ourselves, I'll do, we're going to use it on the range breakout today, nothing else. Um, so, Wilbur, I know your hand was up. Ron, it depends on your platform um, that you use. I take it for futures trading. So, if you use Ninja Trader, I use the uh, Ninja Trader data itself, the continuum. Uh, you, if you're an interactive broker, customer, for example, you use the interactive broker subscription and that can feed through to TradingView or Ninja Trader. The same with TradeStation. Use the TradeStation data and then that will feed through API to uh, TradingView. Uh, there's lots of ways to do that, but it really depends on where your brokerage is uh, for data. So automated strategy builder, trading view. So you need a, you still need a brokerage account to get that data. Um, so you need a brokerage account that connects to API. And I'll show you that in a little while. So we're going to look at range breakout. So I did gold, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to the strategies and switch this off. Um, because it's quite obvious when, when you actually look through this, um, how I started this. So there's a lot of back-end information on the Automated Strategy Builder. And one of the things you've got to remember is uh, we've just been through, uh, in essence, a summer break. You've got six weeks. I've had six weeks off. A lot of institutional traders have August off. Uh, there's there's a lot lower volume. Behaviour's not there. There's there's less economic data. Yes, you've got your own FPs every week, every month, sorry. Um, but, you know, there is a... Um, sort of a lack of data coming out, lack of news, lack of trading volume. So it's almost like a reset and we need to understand what's going to be going off in the last 60 days, but then monitor each week to try and build up uh, the optimization for a particular strategy. So I'm going to look at gold. Gold isn't that tradable right now, um, but we are, we are, it is what it is. And I think this is a good example to, to show when we're, we're optimizing strategies, not trading indicators, strategies, very important here, uh, that we start with a very sort of risk averse type strategy um, so we can start to build the picture and build the confidence again as the markets have really started to take hold again. So one of the things I want to do straight away is just, I'm just going to take off this and just put it disabled here. So this so basically, when we're, we're using the range breakout on the automated strategy builder, we are looking for the best times of the day uh, and the days of the week to trade, okay? Um, because those patterns repeat itself. And with, with the gold opening range, it's pretty simple. We've got that 820 opening range. We measure the first 10 minutes each day, and we look for those trades. Um, but there's, there, there are other influences or confluences, if you like, within the markets that make that a better trade on a Monday compared to a Tuesday or, or whatever. But we need to understand what that behavior is and what that performance is um, on a rolling 60 day period. So what I've done, first of all, is also um, I'm only going to be looking for straddle and opening range trades. Now, I'm not going to go dive down too much into this, but uh, opening trade is when the gold pit opens and we look for a breakout of that opening range. Um, and it has a bias of bullish or bearish. The straddle trade is when we have a trade, uh, the opening range, but it opens in yellow. So it's neutral. So it's almost like um, it's an each way bet, if you like. So there's no real time. Gold pit open is 8.20 a.m. EST for the U.S., and 8 a.m. European time for in for Europe, which is 2 a.m. EST. So um, no problem. So I've got my basics on there. I, the max range for the um, opening range trade that's got a bias is 50 ticks. If it's more than 50 ticks, there's too much risk there. So I'm going to not want to take that trade. I'm only going to enter with one contract and make this very, very simple. And the order type, I'm just going to have stock market. Make it simple. Market, if tux is a little bit more advanced and it's for really sophisticated traders. Um, the entry offset is one tick. So that's going to be one tick above if it's a long or one tick below that opening range um, extremity. Uh, stop loss offset is two ticks. 
and then um, stop loss update. So that's when we we move the, the, the stop loss. So when it's moved through 10 ticks, I want to move it to break even. Yeah. So that two ticks for the entry is one tick above the entry. So we're covered all our costs. When it gets to 30 ticks, I want to move the stop loss to 20. Uh, and when it gets to 45 ticks, I want to move the stop loss to 30. Now, the confirmation exit mode is something that's you that we 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 can either have target or confirmation. I'm using confirmation on this case, and I'm not going to start to explain that because that isn't a boot camp for the automated strategy builders. Um, but it allows for runners. Now, gold isn't running over the summer, uh, so that you, you won't see any runners on here. But that's um, I always sort of that's default for me. And because we've only got one contract, I've put a, a, a you know a, a target of, of 100 uh, ticks there, um, th which is hoping a lot after summer because those tip, those moves weren't really 100 ticks at all. Um, straddle ter trade, very similar settings, except the max range this time is 65, purely because we've got that indecision, whether it's bullish or bearish. It's very neutral. So when we're looking at uh, trading that, uh, with a straddle, we, we we give it a little, if the range is a little bigger, we, we're okay because what market does decide what to do, whether it wants to go up or down, um, it, it usually goes with, with, a, with a lot of force. So I've put all of those in there. There's other, um, other types of strategies. I've got to make sure on Ninja Trade, this is very important. So the candle uh timings are different so on um on trading view for example you would put that at 8 20 but it's when the candle closes on ninja trader so that's 8 30 a.m so even though the gold pit opens at 8 20 we're on a 10 minute chart so that range is defining that first 10 minutes when that candle closes at 8 30 there's these little nuances between uh platforms that you really need to understand uh, and then there's lots of other um, sort of information in there, but I'm not going to sort of go through there. So I'm going to apply that. And I'm going to put it on the chart. So this is quite advanced. And I would say it's only for sophisticated traders or those that want to learn through the boot camps and take their time to do that. This is the not fire and forget, get rich quick uh, type of um, ordeal here. So we've got another chart. I'm going to make sure my data series is on um, 60 days. So I'm looking 60 days back. And then I'm going to just, just put on the strategy performance report. Okay. So that's another, I'm going to bring that over. So at the moment, it's not very good. Profit factor is only one. Um, you know, the total net profit in 60 days is $109. So there's something going off. There's certain days that aren't working. The thing to do then with the strategy performance report is going to analysis. And then we're going to look at days of the week. Okay, so Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're green. Sunday, when we get the night open, is red. Tuesday is red. Friday is red. Okay, so quick question. Which days is the best day to trade the US gold pit open during the week? It's graphically there right in front of you right now. Whether it's long or short, it doesn't matter, okay? No, we only trade Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. They're the ones consistently making profits, okay? The ones in red, these are the ones making losses, okay? So we trade Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah? We can then, obviously, we can go down to hours of the day as well. Um, so when we've got it totally open, sometimes we get this 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. And that's almost Sunday when we get that market open. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 sorry. Yeah. So green is profit and red with analysis is loss. So when we go back to that uh, day of the week, you yeah, consistently make profits Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. No problem, Trevor. It's a it's a learning curve. Yeah. So the thing we need to do straight away from there is we want to select days. Yeah. This is a very simple example because the gold pit open for Europe for, for the US opens at a certain time of the day, only once a day. And this is why I chose this because it's really simple. So remember, I'm going to take a screenshot of that strategy performance right now. Okay, just put it back up again. 
and I'm going to take a screenshot right now. So it, there's a lot of things with a screenshot that are important with um, with this performance report. So it's not just uh, the profit factor. It's what the max drawdown is. So we know from our quick analysis by using uh, the tool that we know which days to trade. So we can start to narrow down that. So at the moment, total net profit, $109 for all that work in 60 days for 37 trades. Uh, percentage profitable, 51%. It's not good. Yeah, we need to start to optimize that strategy. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell this. We're going to just get it off. And then we're going to go down to one of the settings down at the bottom here. And the training sessions mode, we're going to select days. I've already done this. Uh, so we've got Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, we said that Sunday was no good. We said um, Tuesday was no good and Friday was no good. Yeah, so now it will only trade between 8, 20 a.m. and 9 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because that's when that bowl pit opens. And we know from that, Previous data that's measured the performance over the last 60 days of trading this automatically, uh, that this is the optimal days to trade that. So we've done that. That's the first step. So now we apply that. And we look at the performance report again. Okay. So now in 60 days, $2,797 profit. We've got a 75% win rate. We've cut down the amount of trades. There's only 20 trades, 15 are winners. We've still got five losers in there. Um, max drawdown, $454, which is quite a lot, okay? Uh, but other things to look at here is the average winning trade is $268. The average losing trade is $246. So we're slightly less with the losing, but we're winning 75 out of 100 of the times. Okay, so we're starting to get real where that optimization is. And that's this is a good starting point, really. And this is what the enterprise membership's got right now, although we're having problems technically. I will not uh, deny that. I've got a, what's called a source code version on my computer because I'm also testing um, some other automated strategies for the future. Uh, but what that's done is altered the way I send those particular strategy files to the enterprise membership. But we're going to we're going to solve that really quickly. Um, so we got some, you know, we got some really good results here. The range breakout is a lot easier. You know, as I said before, it only happens at once a day. Um, so largest winning trade, $995. Largest losing trade, 454 And that's what that drawdown was there. So we need to go and have a quick look on the chart now and see if there's anything we can do right now to optimize, to actually get rid of that type of trade, what day of the week it is, uh, and that sort of thing. We can also look on the analysis again now, and you can see all 20 trades there, okay? We can see that this big loser, if you like, that stands out quite a bit is on the 3rd of August, okay? Um, when we go back, look on the 3rd of August, we'll see if there's any major data, any major news. If it was news, there's not a lot we can do about it. News comes out when it comes out. If there's data that we, we, we've we missed or, you know, we don't, we really should take note of that. Uh, let's have a look. Let's go back to the 3rd of August. I'm using the third of September, sorry. Yeah, uh, third of yeah, you know, third of August. Third of August. So we we didn't have any um data that came out. So there's nothing we can learn from that because PMI came out on that day, but not until 10 a.m. EST. So we really need to go and look at the chart. And this is the important bit here, is we see the last trade here um actually did very very well but came back up to hit the um the trading stop at this point here 64 the entrance 60 so we so it's 20 ticks so it's that it was that second um second point of control where it adjusted it to 20 ticks uh in reality 
it went to so it went to at least 30 ticks um and, and not a lot more this is we're not getting runners here and that's the thing let's go back to the 8th of august and see if there's anything we can do to uh, mitigate that type of trade so 8th of august I don't see a loser there. And that was the seventh. Okay, Mick, cheers, thank you. Um, I have to remember that date. I'm gonna to have to go back to that performance report now because that was obviously the wrong date. Analysis. Third of August. Come on, why didn't somebody spot that mistake? Okay, so here it was quite a narrow range, but we did have a rejection straight away. Uh, so we went short and it turned around pretty damn quick. Now, I think that may be the straddle trade. So one of the things we look at right here and now is do we take that straddle trade off and just leave it for the other ones? Uh, so we're going to do that now and have a look. So we're going to go to strategies. And let's just remove the straddle trade option. Okay. Click apply. Now, it may be a colouring issue with my blue background. It's still there, so it's not uh, uh, neutral. So uh, strategy performance should, in theory, be the same. Let's check that. No, it's not. It's actually worse. So I've taken straddles off, and it's only $1,500 profit. Okay? Uh, so that's worse. So we're going to put straddles back on. And sometimes you've got to accept there's going to be a loser. OK, there is not a trading strategy out there that gives you 100 percent win rate. I'm sorry, it just doesn't do it. Uh, so I'm just going to put that on. And then we're going to finish up on this because uh, I just wanted to go through and just show you where the start point is for gold for us. Um, leading into Christmas. So we're going to start. So we've had a loser there. And to be honest, that happens. And, and that would have been news. There was no data that came out. We cannot predict news. All we can say is over the last 60 days, we've got the right days. Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We have the right time because it's dictated by their opening range. We're taking the risk of work away of day-to-day uh, -day like this one. We have a massive seesaw option. And we do teach those data reversals, which are pretty cool. Um, but right now, we've got a sensible strategy that's made around $2,000 per one con per one contract uh, over the last 60 days. It's, uh, it's a low, reasonably low risk. Um, and we have a starting point. So what we do now is we measure that over the next two or three weeks and we see how it performs. If we didn't take a trade like today, let's understand why. Uh, is there something we can change to, to get that trade? Uh, or, you know, this was a reasonable move down, but it didn't take the trade. Was the range too big? Do we need to increase it a little bit? There's, there's, there's lots of things that will help us decide how to optimize that strategy. But that's the ASBs. I just wanted to cover that because that's the starting strategy that we're using with the enterprise membership. Uh, and I'm going to start to build some more as from tomorrow. So then I just want to bring over now. I want to bring over trading view chart. Okay. My favorite copper. Okay. Now. I'm going to go range breakout again here for a second because this is very important. So with copper, and I know quite a lot of people started trading copper now, not perhaps because I do, it's perhaps because I make a lot of, lot of videos with it because it's my, it's my go-to, if you like. Um, 
So London Open is usually very good. We didn't get the short with the London Open today, although we did get the buyer's depth heat map saying, yes, that's pretty good, but it just didn't work. We came back through for a, con uh, a continuation trade for a, a small trade here. The trade coming back up, we wouldn't have taken because the bias needs to give us that confirmation, it, first of all, in the range. Now, this is really interesting for me in that we had the oil pit open. We had a red bias on the opening range, but it didn't take the short. We then go into the New York Stock Exchange open, which had a bullish candle and give us a neutral bias. You can see the London opening range at this point was just above, and this acted as resistance. The confluence of these zones when they're sewed together is extremely powerful. Um, it found resistance, came back down. You see how it bounced off the bottom of the range here, if I go long? You go wide on this, sorry. It bounced off the bottom, okay? Now, sensible traders see this pivot here, and this is the short of the day for copper. So the next candle gives us a bullish harami, okay? Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go long. Most people totally rely on candlestick patterns, which is a load of crap, to be honest, because behavior, 50% price action, 50% volume, okay? This was enough. It turned back around again and see how we... See, we go... With the bicep heat map, we go green, neutral, red. We're going all red at this candle. Pull slightly up on this one. But then I'll tell you what, as soon as that starts to move down, that turns red. That's the entry here. Okay? All the way down. Now I'm going to put the manager on. I'm going to put the manager on aggressive. It's already on aggressive. So we're still in this right now. I just wanted to show you this because this is very, very important. When we look at candlestick patterns, we can see this bullish harami here was normal behavior, okay? So we had a big backbone. It had higher than average volume. You can tell that by the manager, and it was red, so it had more volume than the previous one. We had a slight gap up. We had a grey candle this time, which is normal for a bullish harami, okay? But from the close, we gapped up and it sold straight away. There's a, there was a lot of orders up there and we got higher than average volume again, pushing us through our entry. And then we've just free, free fallen all the way down here. So this was the trade on copper today, okay? When you're trading any instrument, okay, you need to be patient. Yeah. Now, there are other strategies that you could use on smaller time frames in this 10 minute with copper, for example, on these moves. There's, ro there's the roller coaster, there's a VWAP predator. Uh, so there are continual op you know, opportunities to trade on different time frames with different strategies. Uh, but what I wanted to concentrate on a little bit more today was that range breakout because I wanted to do it on the ASBs, but I also wanted to show you manually as well. Uh, and it's about being patient. We can see if you if I just draw where is it? If I draw this pivot here after London open, and we join up this pivot before the oil pit open and the US open, we've got a zone there. We've got a support zone, yeah? We've got a higher low here and a lower low there. It should push down, okay? We're getting some real good momentum with the buy step heat map, six time frames higher, okay? Um, when we get this move down, it rejects into the zone. We go all six red. The red turns into the range breakout. We go short. It breaks down below these lows, this support zone, and we're, we're still short right now, okay? Um, any questions on this particular strategy with copper? I'm a big copper fan. Uh, I've been trading it for quite a long time. You have to be patient, and you'll probably get three good days uh, a week with copper. Uh, I'm quite lucky in that 
Um, the London Open for me is 11 a.m. Dubai time, okay? The Oil Pit Open is 5 p.m. So I can do my trading at this time. I can take the rest of the day off to work on the software business. And then my sort of busy time is here. Uh, and to be honest, trading, managing this is really, really simple. It's going flat now. Europe's dead. It's closed. Gone, gone, it's gone home. Um, this volume is really, you know, really teetering off. So now's the time to take take this profit. It's not really going to go do much right now. So um, that's uh, the range breakout very simply on copper. We did gold on the ASBs. Has anybody got any questions or want me to look at a, a, a specific current instruments? Before I go to that, I want to, in my book, I mentioned um, that over the, the nine years we've had uh, the software running and obviously we've built more and more each time, one of the sort of most common uh, sort of questions or brights I get from people is that uh, it's not working for me. Um, I can't make it work. And then I ask them, what are you trading? So then they'll go ES, gold, oil, um, a bit of Forex or, or whatever it is. So on average, we, we did a bit of a data dive. Uh, it's around about five instruments, okay? So my question, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll do that in a second. So my question to, to a lot of people is, how many wives you got? And the usual answer is one. So, and how would you be able to cope with five wives? Okay, five lots of behavior, uh, all different, and trying to understand that, yeah? So it's the same when you're trading, you pick a wife. My wife is copper, okay? I love copper, I'm intimate with copper, I understand the behavior, yeah? So I do not deviate away from copper, okay? As long as it's performing for me and the behavior is expected, uh, and I, you know, on the right hand side over here, I've got a big 55 inch monitor vertically down. I've got three big charts on there, and in each chart, there's three separate charts. I've got five screens here, uh, and I've got Ninja Trader and Trading View. I've got automated strategy builders. I've got manual trading. Uh, I have a workflow. Yeah. Behavior, workflow, and it works for me on one. Thing. So let's have a look at um, Renko for Ron. So I would say Uni Renko is better. Okay, so I'm going to show you with the new slingshot that's being released on the 21st of September. Uh, this is Uni Renko, and then I'm going to put it on um, on normal Renko. So Uni Renko smooths things out easier. Okay, so it's easier to find those pivots. It's easier to trade. So with Unirenko and Damien, if you get in touch with Damien, he'll put his email into the chat. Uh, we we give that away for free. You know, you, you can get download Unirenko as an Ninja Trader add-on, and you can add it add it onto your charts. Okay, so Unirenko is free. So when you go into um, data series. You don't get the, it's not the signal software, it's just the Renko type of chart, okay? You don't get all this slingshot. Um, in the data series, we can see here, uh, Uni Renko's down the bottom, normal Renko, ATR Renko's, and all sorts of stuff that I've gone in there. But Uni Renko works very well. If I was just to put this on normal Renko now, you don't get the same results. Okay, and it's the same whether you're using roller coaster as well. You just don't get the same results. Renko is very, it's not smooth. Yes, you get some decent trades, don't get me wrong. But, you know, Slingshot is an extremely powerful tool. And when we released on the 21st of September, uh, you know, there was a lot of people going to be using it because even with Renko here, yes, there's a couple of losers here, but these buy signals uh, today have been phenomenal. Okay. But Unirenko is a lot smoother. So let's go back to Unirenko. Can't remember the exact settings I've got on uh, for Unirenko for CL now. So I may have to change that. 
But with Unirenko, like any other chart, you've got to find the groove for the particular strategy that you're trading. So um, with Slingshot, um, with oil, I think it's a 135 or 2610. Uh, this is loading still now. So I'm just going to change that to 2610. And I click apply. Oh, we need bars. And we need 2001, 2002. Yeah. Okay, Ron. Yeah, you'll get an email shortly about the launch party on the 21st September. So this is loading right now. So I'm just going to leave that one to load and I'm going to go to this one here. Um, so very, very simply, Unirenko smooths out a lot of crap, yeah? It's also very important to have those uh, guardian zones. Now, I'm going to give you a bit quick tip here, Ron. If you haven't got those guardian zones right now, don't get them until you get the offer for the Slingshot release. Because if you subscribe to the Slingshot for, the, for a six-month block, for example, you get three months of the... Um, Guardian zones for free, three months access. Okay. Um, so there's just a little tip there, something that we're giving away with uh, the new slingshot. So, you know, you see how smooth this is here. We get a one, uh, we get a type one buy, we get the long, and it gets taken out at the trading stop around about the third target anyway. Another type one buy here blows through the third target, trading stop gets taken out at this point here. OK, very, very strong. And we can change those uni Renko settings as well, depending on the instrument that you trade. We can see that 135 is reasonably good uh, with this uh, type of strategy. So there's, there's this built in trade management with this. Uh, you still need the buyer's debt team app to, uh, that can give you confirmations. Um, yeah, I'll do that in a second. The main thing is we can change, you see the trading stop position here. Obviously, you're going to have to adjust your stop manually. Um, but if I go into the indicators here, we can change the stop EMA to be really uh, to 13, for example, um, and be really aggressive. You can see how aggressive that's gone now. And we go back to these, how much, you know, even further aggressive or you can make it more conservative depending on what time frame so this still works on tick charts so when we, we're going to go to es now uh and we can use uh we'll go to tick charts on es okay with the slingshot so well that's done pretty quick actually okay so again the uni renko settings we had on oil will not work on es it has different volume uh different price ranges and everything else what you need to do is um, obviously look for uh, something that's in the group. You know, this is not overly in the group right now. So if you go to data settings, uh, data series even, and we're going to change this to tick, and we're going to start at 500 tick. I can't remember what the settings were off the top of my head. Um, let me just get rid of that, 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 and that. That's not a bad setting. Wherever you see the trading stop, it's obviously a winner. Um, but I wouldn't say that's a perfect um, type of time frame on the tick chart. So we're going to change it a little bit. I'm going to go 350 maybe. Um, again, I'm no, that's even worse. That's not, that's worse. So let's go, uh, let's go the other way, go 1,000 ticks, okay? So with anything, if ES is your wife and you understand the behavior, you're going to take time to understand the best type of chart to trade with the strategies that you've got. OK, so um, what type of chart and time frame you use for um, the range breakout, for example, is pretty set. It's just normal minute. It's 15 minutes on ES, for example. Uh, when it comes to the roller coaster, 
you may use Unirenko and, and Scout Barn 135. When it comes to ES, you might look at 1,000 ticks or 700 ticks. It's about finding the groove for each different type of strategy. Remember, we've got lots of strategies for lots of different types of market conditions and, strat uh, and, and the way uh, certain instruments move. Um, and that's very important. So you spend time to, uh, in, in our days, it was caught to your girlfriend uh, before you got engaged. You got time to understand, to learn, uh, understand that behavior. And this is what you need to do with whichever instrument you choose, okay? Um, a thousand tick is obviously not what we're looking for on, on ES with the slingshot. You know, the, we just, just go to a standard five minute you know, how does that perform? Um, performs pretty well, actually. Um, we can see here we had a big move down, pulled back up uh, into that first uh, zone, and then uh, we got the short here. It was a very short zone. Uh, we could go 10 minutes on there and see how that performs. Um, or a good, we go three minutes. Uh, you know, you, it's about trying to find the groove on the particular time frame. On the five minute, yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this on uh, five minutes. Uh, I can actually use seconds. On ES, I'm going to go to bars. I'm going to go to 2001. Okay. Uh, yeah, measured this pullback extremely well here uh, into the 60 minute zone. So it pushed down, tried to push into the 60 minute zone, pushed through. Came back up to test that and uh, the first pullback zone of the slingshot, and then it's come all the way back down again. So again, five minute high can actually works extremely well with uh, with slingshot as well. And uh, so very, uh, you know, so during the London, we're very narrow range here. Not, you know, we don't want to go down into this support. Eventually, it does push down to the sixty minute, then comes back up again, and then pushes down uh, further with that slingshot. Um, you know, again, we, we're starting to get some of that volume coming back in now. Type one cell, we're going very, it's very flat during the during the London session. Type one cell, there, really, really good. Uh, let's just go to scalping. Uh, let's see what scalping looks like on here. Um, so we're going to go Unirenko. Don't find it. We're going to go 135. This is fast, by the way. Yeah, 135 is pretty good. We get the tight one cell there. It's hit target zone two. Uh, it's not really, there was a trade coming out here. Um, well, that was the trade of the day at 10 o'clock. Wow. Okay, let's get rid of some of this because we're we're scalping, so we only need um, the Uni Renko and the 15 minute. So, yeah, there were some good trades this morning. Um, Scalping wise, we had a type three cell and a type one cell at this point here. And this is where uh, you start to understand the behavior at certain times of the day. So later on at 10 o'clock, the type one cell, this very tight training stop was the thing to do. But earlier on, just after the opening session, it's too aggressive, okay, because you've got a lot more volatility. So you, you know, you're going to have to adjust that as the day goes on. Uh, to get the best sort of moves. Um, and then obviously as we're coming down, we, you know, we've got a another great sort of sort of signals here. So if we see we take this cell signal here, for example, when this signal candle closes, it prints the entry a tick below. Okay. <laughs> so uh again, when you're doing this scalping wise and uh, you know if you're doing it on a, a tick chart or a five minute chart or something you've got more time to do that uh, but you've got to be ready you may just need to do a market order uh, if you're sort of you know let's see how, how quick that's moving right now so you know it's not moving overly fast because it's not a fast time of the day um, so you've got time to place your order okay um so it actually gives you where you should be entering. 
Um, but again, you may not be able to get that exact price at 4465.50. You might get a 4465.25. Yeah. But that it prints that on the chart. It tells you the type of signal. Uh, it's come into that pullback zone. This middle pullback zone here, there's an 80% probability it's going to hit that target too. Yeah. This first zone is 85 and this last zone is 75 to hit target two. So you see the type one buy here when it comes back up, it hits target two. There was a, the type, the pivot here is 80%. That is going to happen. Okay. So what it does, it looks for the pullbacks against the, this, in, in this case, it's a miniature trend because you're, you're on a very fast time frame. Pulls into the pullback zone, meets all the other criteria that logic works out. And yes, that's a good type one sell. Prints the entry, starts to go through and there. So some of the beta testers have actually been doing it. And somebody posted on um, uh, on the Discord group today. He only ever takes the trade to target two. That's what he does. He takes it out straight away. He doesn't use the, the trading stop. He just takes it to target two and, and he trades NQ with it and it gets out. Okay. Let's just have a look at NQ. I'm not a fan of NQ. So trading NQ is like being married to, um, I can't put this politically correct, to a serial killer with, no, I can't say it. <laughs> But NQ can wipe you out. Yeah, I really don't like NQ at all. Um, so yeah, so serial killer with bipolar. Okay, um, but NQ is it's nuts. Okay, I really, really don't like it. I've never really traded it uh, very well because it's hard to understand the behaviour. To be honest, um, yes, it is. Yeah. Um, so if you went tick, you know, even a thousand tick is going to be difficult to trade um, with NQ. But you can see here, you know, even the slingshot here, the type three cell actually is a trend failure. OK, so uh, this this initial bullish move up uh, this morning failed. It had a pullback zone. The pullback zone failed and that was the type three cell. It then give the pullback zones for the short, which then came down and that's where we are right now. So yes, for those NQ traders, for those people that have got healthier hearts than me uh, and less stress levels, uh, then that is tradable. So let me just check the time. Okay, we've got about two minutes left. Anybody got any questions on any of the indicators? Um, that I can help with, and because it's, it's your time now, let's see if we can answer some questions for you. RTY, RTY, I do like RTY. Leader of the pack. Yeah, yeah, NQ can, uh, you can smooth it out. Thousand ticks, probably not the way to go with slingshot. So let's just go to um, Urenko. Let's start with 224, bars 2002. Let's get rid of the weekly. Leave in the 15 minute because we are scalping. Great trade today. Like most of these, they pull back. Type one sell, pretty good. Didn't go as deep as NQ and ES. I don't think 224 is probably the right. At that time of day in the morning, it was the right type of um, chart. The 224 Union Renko, we got a nice type one buy here. Uh, took us out in the trading stop at target three. Type one sell here again down to target three. Type three sell here down uh, to the trading stop out. And those buys to the trading stop out. It, to be honest, 
uh, you know, RTY is not a massive mover, but it works very, very well on Slingshot by the looks of it, 224. I'd probably spend a little bit more time if I was trading it to try and find a smoother uh, Unirenko for, for that. But yes, very tradable. Uh, so the Slingshot is available on the 21st of September. Okay, that's when it's being released for lease. Uh, the pull, the green and the red pullback zones is included. So if I just take off that, and I take off um, the buy step heat map, So that's what you get. You get the pullback zones and you get the type one, two or three buys or sells. Okay. Um, and then that's, that's what will be the lease. Now there's a special offer and I really, I, I shouldn't be saying this to be honest, because it's not even out yet. But if you take the six month lease and then it doesn't renew for six months afterwards, you just pay, you just do it monthly after that. Uh, you will get the guardian zones for three months for free. And I'm even thinking of giving the VWAP Predator for free for a month as well, okay? Um, but the main thing is the slingshot has been worked on all year. We've had beta testers helping me develop how we give these type 1, type 2 cells. <laughs> Dragon Trader, yes. If you lease the slingshot for the six months, you will get a three-month break on the Guardian Zones. I've said that here. It's live. It's recorded. Uh, and that's what it will do. So, you know, when you when you subscribe and you get the options, uh, choose the six-month option because that's the only time you get that um, for the Guardian Zones. Uh, we will pause your subscription for three months on the Guardian Zones. Okay? And that's for everybody. Everybody watching the recording, um, we, you know, I think the Guardian Zones are extremely important. They're a very, very good tool. I'm sure you will agree, Dragon Trader. Um, uh, but we want people to start using the Slingshot on, on Ninja Trader because it's it's been a passion of mine this year and we're ready to go. So 21st September is the launch party. Uh, there will be emails going out soon so you can register. And that will be at 8 a.m. EST on that day. Uh, George, uh, yeah, we go back. Where are we? Um, oh, I haven't got HG on, um, on the 10 minute on here on the range breakout. So let me just go back to, um, So for me, there was a zone mm, a long way away. Hang on. Yeah. So, so there was a big zone. Around mm, about here, I suppose. That's where we are now. Okay. Um there was a zone, small zone here. So yes, there's a there's some support there, but it's about the behavior that's very important for me. So, and we're talking recent support here. Remember, a breakout is an impulse move. It's breaking out of a range that's been formed when lots of traders start trading it. Okay. Uh, it's not necessarily like the well, predator or roller coaster or X Pro Logo. It's, most of the times it's very powerful so the zone i'm interested in is this one that's been formed recently when we tried to push down through london and we formed this pivot we tried to push down before the oil pit opened and we formed this lower pivot this zone identifies my earliest opportunity to get into this yeah 
So let's talk through this behavior. We come down into this zone for the second time, which forms the zone. We push into the oil pit open. We're not going to go short until this point on the red open yet. We haven't got the bias depth heat map all in our favor at that moment in time. There's no trade. Wait for the New York Stock Exchange open. On my big screen over there, I have got all one of the charts is just NASDAQ, RTY, YM, and ES on the breakout on the 15 minute. Okay. I keep it there. That's my barometer of how the market's going at the open. And if they're all going in the same direction, they're all going down or or whatever it is, that helps me understand where that main direction is for the for the, for the overall markets. We look at this rejection, talking through this behavior, telling the story, this rejection on higher than average volume of those highs into that London zone. That zone is more important than your support and resistance zones right now, because this is the zone formed when people start trading this during the London Open. OK, it rejects it. We get a further rejection of the highs and higher than average volume. We get a massive candle come down to test this zone again on higher than average volume. We have a bit of a respite, okay? We should be ready to go short here, regardless of where these are, because we can make this risk-free as soon as it hits there, yeah? So let's talk through this story. We get into this trade, yeah? Pushes down further, we go down through, rejects those lows on higher than average volume. What do we do? We make it risk-free, yeah? Very aggressive. Remember, I've got the manager on aggressive. Why? Because these moves are aggressive when they happen. Yeah. So we can manage it aggressively. So not looking right. If this came back out after that rejection of those lows and higher than average volume, I've lost no money. Okay. In fact, it came down to test the next zone. Yeah. And then it settled into that zone. So I'm going to take that profit right now. So, you know, is it a massive trade? I mean, I trade 10 contracts, but you know, it's 37 ticks. So it's about 500 bucks. Yeah. But times 10 contracts, that's quite a long, large trade. But what you can do is understand the story of the behavior that's led you to that point. And what I've just talked through there is what you should be saying to yourself every day. OK, you should be talking through what's happened, what's happened since the London, you know, uh, and what's happened going into the oil? Understand this. I'm not saying that's going to happen every time, but you need to talk through the story, okay? You need to talk through the behavior. Understand, candle by candle, what's happening. Yes, I'm going to enter there. It's not going to be a great trade all the way down to here, but when it touches here, I can go risk-free, especially when I get the warning signs of a higher-than-average volume rejection of the lows. As it happens in this case, it continued to push down. So as soon as we get this test to this zone and it comes back up and rejects into that zone, I can move my trading stop above that zone there to that pivot. So now I'm using those zones to actually help me manage the trade. OK, now we're into here. We've pushed back up. OK, and we're not really going anywhere. Remember, a lot of European traders like me trade copper. The volume's running out. Let's just put it above that pivot. If we don't want to take the profit right now, and we think during the witching hour, uh, you know, ES and everything's going to continue to drop and it might have a massive drop in the last hour, let's give this a chance. Put that trading stop there, locking profit, about 30 ticks or whatever it is, 25 ticks. Um, give that a chance. If it takes you out, it takes your profit. Does that make sense, George? So the, the Guardian zones are are important tool but when it comes to the range breakouts range breakouts most likely push through those zones okay because there's just a massive increase in volume and activity uh, on that particular instrument you might find uh, that that some instruments don't react so well to those opens i can i can tell you rty um nq es and NASDAQ all respond very well. Copper responds responds well. And this is why I developed that this particular thing, because I've always traded copper for so long. Uh, I, you know, 
de developing this strategy is what I used to do. I used to trade this manually, draw the lines in and, and do everything else. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, great session today, guys. Um, yeah, copper's brilliant, George, isn't it? Uh, it is. Uh, it's a great. Uh, Frank's not here tonight. He's in Germany. He's he's what he's on my apprenticeship screen for twenty twenty three. Uh, he's never traded before in his life. Okay, he started in January and he's trading copper every day now. Okay, uh, and we will be launching the twenty twenty four apprenticeship scheme in October. I think. Excellent, George. Well done. Thank you, Dragon Tiger. Cheers, Trevor. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you in a month's time. Unless you're on the Slingshot Live party, I'm doing that on the 21st September. I'm off to Singapore next week. Uh, I'm going to watch the Grand Prix, the F1 Grand Prix in Singapore uh, next weekend. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, just a quick five day away and then back training again. Cheers, everybody. Take care.